Brada set my did very bod do e roan a creso im carterev tewes. Ah, uh, or in English, uh, good morning, how's your day? I'm Rowan, and welcome to my spooky house. As to why I speak better Welsh, even if only very slightly some days, than I do Irish. Uh, the easiest answer is Catholic guilt. I've, <laughs> I've gone over it ad nauseum as like a quirky kind of segue into many, many other videos, but this is not one of those. I Today, I've got a book review. Finally, I've been talking about it for months, right? Oh, yes, I have. And I know, it took me so much less time to finish it. It's... right? So, uh, we've got another, in the Rethu Mythos, um, another one by Storm Constantine. This would be a student of Kaimi, or, uh, let's see, lacking, I believe this one lacks an adequate glossary in the back to explain the pronunciations of various names of things. So, that's how I'm saying it. Uh, if I am wrong, somebody please get on me about it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as um, all the uh, Rethu books that I've been reading since, um, in order of publication numbers, we are talking um, Breeding Discontent. So, since Breeding Discontent, uh, these have all been on uh, the Emanion Press imprint, uh, which is owned by S Storm herself, and uh, I would classify this uh, genre as um, pagan fantasy, I would say. Uh, this would be the second in the Alba Sul sequence, as she's come to call it, and I'm already on the third book, wherein... Hello! Hi, Murnau! Uh, no, Murnau's not in the book, but uh, in the third book, this map seems not especially relevant. A few towns seem to have the same name, but as far as the... Um, Formerly British Isles, after Great Britain, it seems islands have been given different names by the third book, but as far as this one goes, this map is still relevant. Um, and then what- Hi, Kitty! Why are you sitting on my notes? Huh? Why are you sitting on my notes? Is it because you're a little pain in the butt? Yes, I think so. I think so. You're not being helpful, are you? No. No, Murnau's never at all that helpful. So, <laughs> yes, okay, we're going to have a cat in this review, because why not, right? So, let's see, as to help me along with this, I've got a guided journal to assist me with this. Hopefully this will um, prove a little bit more helpful than not, although they don't give me a whole lot of room on some of these pages. Um, Hi! Yes, I know, I'm not petting you quite nearly enough, am I? So, this book picks up where the Hainama left off as far as Gesserill's story is concerned. So, he has left the, uh, the, the town of Jesseth from, uh, the, uh, formerly known as Cornwall. Oh, hi, now You are, like, right on the notes that I need to read for this. But, what, but it's just such a perfect platform for Kitty. Cat, you have been on my lap without a platform before. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I've seen it. I've got pictures and video to prove it. So, <laughs> from us. So, this picks up from where the Hainama left off, uh, as far as Gesserill's story goes. And this follows Gesserill. Um, whereas uh, the Hainama was told from the point of view of Jasana, who is Isobi uh, Chesnari, which is uh, the Rathu equivalent of married married uh, spouse. Uh, if none of this makes any sense to you, please watch my Rathu reviews from the beginning. I, at this point, it will take so much time to explain things, but in a nutshell, um, Rathu are a post-human species that evolved uh, from humans and are far more adept at certain kinds of magics in addition to um, 
certain improvements to physiology, but a lot more will be explained uh, in the previous reviews. Feel free to watch them. I've got the uh, playlist in the uh, description box below. So uh, Gesserill has transferred his studies uh, in magics, which would be uh, who the Hainama is. He is a teacher of magics. Isobi was the Hainama from the first book, and he does make an appearance approximately halfway through um, this one. Uh, so he makes a reappearance after Gesserill has uh, settled in Kaimi, has, has explained his former reputation uh, as he came to Kaimi with a reputation from Jesseth of tearing apart um, Chesna Bonds, which was not exactly fair to him. After all, he was the, uh, not really the minor student, but definitely there was a huge power differential between the two, um, especially given the implied magics in play from uh, Jasna's point of view from the Hainama. So, Gesril is at Kaimi. He is resuming his studies he, with a uh, different Hainama, who is apparently quite forgettable. I, <laughs> I couldn't remember his name. I skimmed through a few times, and I'm just like... At the same time, that he's he he is a supporting character, but he he just apparently does not have the greatest personality in this one. But yeah, so Gesserill has resumed his studies, and then, like I said, about halfway through, he has repaired his reputation at least as far as the other Har Hara in um, which would be what. They call each other, much like, you know, how humans call each other people and persons. Uh, so, yeah, with the with the other horror about his age in town, he's made friendships. He's uh, found physical lovers, uh, or at least one who, you know, he seems to be getting along greatly with. And then Asobi um, comes to Kaimi for reasons not especially clear. But what ends up happening is he enacts his power over Gesserill. They resume their previous relationship, though when Gesserill comes to a point where he realizes that he is about to throw everything away, everything that he has worked hard to give himself a better name, he's about to throw all of that away for an emotionally abusive in so much as he's quite selfish uh, Hainama, who is not his Hainama anymore. At this point, it is clear that this is an emotionally abusive, emotionally draining relationship. And it ends, as we see, not a very long book, but it ends giving... Uh, Yesril the upper hand in things, and he has a restored faith in himself. Like I said, this is a very short book, and it has a very clear redemption arc. It was very engaging, uh, but yeah, as far as like why it took me so long to review, things happen, they happen again later, right? But yeah, it, it was very, it was a very quick, easy read, very engaging. Now, as part of a series, I definitely would not recommend this to somebody who has not at least read the Hainama. Though, to be fair, I also said I wouldn't exactly recommend the Hainama for somebody who hasn't at least read, you know, an omnibus collection of the first three Reithu uh, novels by Storm Constantine. Uh, there is a bit of backstory that would definitely make a lot more sense um, reading the Albasul sequence if you've previously read the Raythu Chronicles, which would be the uh, the first three novels in the series. If you haven't at least read the Raythu Chronicles before picking up Albasul, I would say 
you know, there there is enough in Hainama and uh, Student of Kaimi to at least pick up. It would be like, I would compare it to, uh, if you only speak Spanish and you visit Portugal or Brazil or even Italy, you can probably get through a day knowing just Spanish, for example. You're not going to be the greatest, uh, but you'll be able to find the public toilets without embarrassing yourself. You won't be completely um, hosed at a uh, at, at the farmer's market, but you know don't expect to hold any deep conversations. You know that's how I would compare picking up Alba Sewell's sequence without at least first reading uh, the Raythu Chronicles because there is there is a lot that is enhanced by knowing the entire backstory of this. So yes, this is definitely part of a series, much like you know, the second and third books of the Raythu Chronicles. Definitely part of a series. You definitely need to have a good, solid understanding of what the hell is going on um, to make a whole lot of sense of this. Also, much like uh, Raythu Chronicles, this one follows a, a more supporting type character than... Uh, Hainama, or even the Moonshawl, which is the third book does, at least when put in the context of the first and second books. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> whereas in Raythu Chronicles, the, uh, the second book, oh crap, I'm even forgetting the character's name right now, but then again, I was going to read the first revision of those three after I finished the Moonshawl. So, uh, yeah, like I, said, I would, I would definitely recommend this to a fan of the world of Raythu, and yeah, that's that's about it. It's a, it's a very it's a very quick read. It's very engaging. Uh, like I said, as long as you understand the backstory and the world this is set in, like I said, it's a very quick read. It is definitely a book you can take on the bus. Uh, I've never been the swiftest reader, um, even though I was. Uh, regarded as a gifted reader as a child. I was never the swiftest reader. I, 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 it takes me forever to finish a book, but that's not an uncommon thing amongst kids and adults with ADHD. Some people with ADHD also, uh, you know, will instead um, be incredibly swift readers, but I, I'm, I'm on the other <laughs> end of that. It, it, it can take, it, this, this took me uh, most of a month to finish. Uh, <laughs> But that's because I do most of my reading on the bus. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, if you're a fan of the series, definitely read this, but you gotta read the Hainama first. Um, and that is that is probably one of the... Uh, the, the, the fact that uh, the World of Raythu definitely needs to um, have at least the first series read to really flesh out what's going on in all subsequent books. This is both a blessing and a curse that you kind of need to read all of them, uh, especially the ones written by Storm, to really appreciate what's going on in later books. Um, the Ray Through Histories, which would be the second trilogy that she wrote um, in this in this world that she has um, really captured, that is, that is indeed, I would consider it a standalone series. You could easily read Raythu Histories first and then read Raythu Chronicles, and it would probably not make a huge difference. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess you could read Raythu Histories first, but um, Chronicles has that first-person perspective through all three books. And this one also, this uh, the Alba Soul sequence also has a first-person uh, narrative perspective through the through the books. This one, unlike the first one, this one is written in the form of diary entries of Gesserl, which is a really interesting take. It really offers an interesting pers uh, way to read this. But yeah, I guess that is a wrap on all of this. So, as I tend to sign off in this way, uh, please take care, take good care of yourselves, uh, wear your sunscreen, and as always, if you enjoyed this or didn't, there are thumb icons in the lower left-hand side preceding the description box. 
on the lower right hand side there is also a subscription button if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to continue watching more of my regular nonsense. And if you want your phone to yell at you with notifications when I upload nonsense, feel free to hit the bell icon as well. And as always, if you have more dollars than cents, uh, the description box also contains a PayPal tip jar as well as Patreon. And I am, I, I am both appalled and oddly impressed that I have two Patreon supporters. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, to my Patreon supporters, uh, which would be my friend, uh, Ali Valkyrie, polytheist, um, writer and activist and American expat living in, uh, Reims, France, and also to a young woman I've known only as Allison the, uh, entire time she's been a Patreon, uh, supporter. If you, um, donate at a $5 monthly you've basically got a subscription to my music and i promise i will be um recording more soon um hello mer now what's up little guy and there are other links and junk in the description box and uh including the uh the links for the Raythu novels since reviewed um by me for my channel, Cat, really? We're doing this today? Uh, and those have affiliate links on them, and so if you buy something from there, I will get a small commission, which will at least, at the very least, keep cats fed. Right? 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 Because that's why half of you subscribe, right? Is to see cats in my way all the time. I haven't been doing much of that. I haven't had many cats in my face lately, but ah, really? <laughs> this is what we're doing today, huh? Okay. Uh, and as always, bats and kisses, and I love you all, and goodbye! Little goofball. Goofy little floofball. Hey, boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Hello. Ah, you're so cute. How? How? Why are you like this?